in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hello, DD, my friend. Welcome to the Christmas edition of the Hyper-V Amigo Showcast. Hello, How are you? <laughs> I feel very welcome, sir. That's good. <laughs> so we have uh, only, I think, some days left to Christmas. This is the 21th of uh, 21st, December, yeah. 21st, yes. And we decided to do a year-end review showcast, right? Yes, we did. So, Didier, let's, let's review the year. How was the year for you? Well, the first of this year started very, very well because <laughs> I was renewed as an MVP, right? So, <laughs> This is your third MVP yeah. award, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think you hope you will get one in 10 days. Huh? Yeah, in kind 11. of, yeah. You know, I, I, I admit, secretly, yeah, I kind of <laughs> hope so. Yeah. Secretly. Yeah. secretly. I have no doubt that you will get one. It's so, it's so secretly I uh, put it on a webcast. So. <laughs> I can hold the webcast back uh, until the 2nd of January if you want to. Oh, yes. Then you can see. No. You can, I, you can see. I think you will get your award. My award was uh, in July. So I'm half a year after you or before you, I was, would say. I think before me. Before yes, me. yes. I, I have I've got my fourth award and I will get it. So if you are an MVP, you have this nice, I, I think you have one of those two. Do you see it? Yes. yes so yes. this is nice for every year. And maybe next year, I hope I will be MVP in the next year, I will get my five-year ring. Oh, the blue one. Ah, it's cool, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so I put cool. it back. Uh, so, But uh, you started your year with uh, your third MVP award, and I have to look in my MVP profile, what I started the year with. Yes, yes, we talked about it. I, I put on the 1st of January, no, on the 4th of January, I put a video online and uh, you were part of this video. Do you remember our, our um, interview in the Ferris wheel in Seattle? Oh yes, 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 that was that was lots of fun. <laughs> that lots was of fun. lots of I think, fun. I think not everything got published, but it was lots <laughs> of fun. <laughs> there was there were there were some hidden parts and uh, there was an um, American MVP I would say who who explained to me and cast in you I think you mean that part how yes. some things are spoken in German and uh, it was it was very funny. <laughs> Dougie, if you're watching this, that was funny. <laughs> and we've got it on tape, right? Well, not tape, on the USB stick, actually. So but... my, my wife and, uh, and uh, Dougie uh, uh, talked a little bit about uh, how things are pronounced in German. And he said, oh, no, no, no. My wife knows German very well. So he was not uh, talking about his experience. I think not, it was not, about... Not just one. very well. Better than most <laughs> Germans, actually. <laughs> but the interview was nice. Um, we were at uh, the aquarium, I guess, in Seattle, and uh, Luz, Luz, uh, your girlfriend has the idea to to do a video with all the MVPs in the Ferris wheel, right? She you has remember? Some ideas. So we took two approaches. One was uh, you can, you could only sit with six people in in such a how you call it this 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 wagon or something. Uh, I yeah, wagon. Let's say like wagon. That. And so we were more than 10 MVPs. Uh, so we had to to, to, uh, go, uh, to uh, tape two rounds uh, with different Ad admitted, people. Admitted, Carson. It was just a trick of you to get to go up twice. Yes, right. We only got a ticket for one ride and you went up twice. <laughs> okay. Well played, my friend. Well played. I mean. Okay. So now I have a little technical issue. I don't see you. Oh. You don't see me again. Oh, again. I'm, I'm right here. Again. So let's stop the recording and watch if everything is okay. Okay. You know, the in February, yeah. you know, there was a very important historic moment that happened. And it was the yeah, very was the very first recording of the Hyper V Amigo Showcast. Oh, you mean that very important. Yes. yes. Uh, Absolutely. Didier, uh, how, how did it 
come that we do the Hyper V Amigo Showcast? Do, it's, you, do you it's remember? It's all thanks to you. It's all thanks to no, you. Why it is thanks to me? No, we, we you, talk... asked, you asked to do one and we said yes. I mean, what, what do you mean? <laughs> but, uh, okay, where is the name Hyper V Amigos coming from? Ah, yes. Do you remember? Yes, I, I, I sort of remember, at least my version of history. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> tell us your version of history, please. Uh, you know, there was once this time that we all, uh, the four of us, you know, uh, Aiden, Finn, uh, Hans Fredevoort, you and me, we went to uh, Barcelona yeah. to present a masterclass on Hyper-V. Yeah. That was for Quest. And for some reason, we, we were thinking up names and... The Hyper V Amigos was one of the suggestions made to have us called, and you got a bit carried away about buying some rivers and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't do that, right? We, we did not do that. But the name stuck, <laughs> yeah, so when we needed to come up with I think it's with nice. A, the Hyper V name. Amigos is nice. Yeah. yeah. So we did our first episode in January. Do you remember the date? I, I'm looking in my. <laughs> I don't know when it was recorded, but it was published in February, as far as I know. In February, uh, here I on the 28th of February. Yes. So the second last day in February. This year, we, I think we had the 29th of February, right? I haven't got a clue. I can check if you want me to. Eh, isn't it every four <laughs> years? But it's not. No, it's not. It's not. We don't have it. <laughs> So, so it was the last day of February. It was the last day of February. I published it, yes. And we, call, we recorded it maybe some days before that. But it was only the two of us, right? Yes, it was. We did only one Hyper-V Amigo showcast with the four of us. Mm -hmm. Because technically it's a little bit difficult. First to get an appointment, the four of us. We are very busy, busy people, I would say. And uh, so and technically four people. Four people in one picture is not so easy for me. <laughs> yes, I, I, I absolutely have no problems with that whatsoever. I mean, I, I love this kind of, of outsourcing my, my video <laughs> yes. recording and uh, stuff to you. I know. Kind of my, kind last, like last time uh, you were talking all about all the cool stuff and I was setting up, setting up the te technic. Um, and I, I had a lot of problems, I, I remember. But we have to do another one with all all four of us. At least in 2015, we should get <laughs> every, them all together. Every year yeah. one, at least. Okay. Yes, at least, yes. Yeah. So what was uh, the next thing uh, you you done or in... Uh... Well, I, I, did a, I did a webcast, I think, with uh, the, the Windows user group in Holland. Okay. About Hyper-V live migration troubleshooting and high performance. That was nice. Yeah, and you did a lot of high-performance stuff with Hyper-V, and I always envy your 10 gigabit live migration over a 10 gigabit network card. I never got so many. I only got maybe nine point something, and uh, yeah. you always were joking about me, right? No, no, it was <laughs> you who was always feeling a bit, you know, less than you should have, you could have been. Yes. But it's, 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 I think... I think give me give me half an hour with you in your lab, and everything will be ten gigabit. <laughs> I'm looking you know, forward to that. <laughs> that's <laughs> me. I'm, I'm the last half gigabit per second. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I had in February I had uh, the CBIT, the German uh, how do you call it? Fair. It is called Fair. Yeah. Um, and I had some presentations there. We had very short ones, I, only 20 mi minutes, and it, it's actually very hard to to get excited and talk about something in only 20 minutes. Uh, and Aiden told us when he had, when he was doing the um, how it's called the speaker idol thing. Speaker idol. Yeah, he, he, he has only five minutes. I can't five imagine minutes. how to do a presentation in five minutes. And you have to condense everything yeah. that is supposed to be in a good presentation in those five minutes. How he did it, I have no idea. But I saw him do it, and yeah. it was amazing. I didn't saw it because I, and he I was not there. Yeah, he won, yeah. And so, so he will be a presenter at the next Tech at 2015. Well, Ignite, <laughs> I, hope. I hope. I hope he will be there. Hey, oh, and by the way, uh, did you uh, book your Ignite uh, uh, thing? I'm, I'm there with, with Kerstin. I'm there with Liz. 
So this is it. Oh, that's cool. I, I'm looking forward to that. So this is the next time we meet in person, I guess. Uh, could very well be so. So, you know, that's, that's how we are. We just fly off halfway across the world to have a chat with each other. <laughs> and meet in Chicago, right? Chicago. Yeah, it's in Chicago. And uh, after that, a month later, we will meet again, I think, in Berlin, no? Uh, will you be at the E2E event? Ah, of course, yes, E2E. Yeah. You will be there. I will be there. Oh, cool, great. I, I'm not doing my acting this, uh, this year. I've mm -hmm. I've not the time to do it, and so yeah, I have time. Yeah, you lost beard. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. So and I so now I have time to go to ETV, and I'm looking very, I'm looking forward to it, and I want to present with you, Maya. We could ah. do an Hyper V Amigo thing with the sombreros. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> okay, but we are okay. we are. We, I, we'll we'll discuss the subject. <laughs> Okay, we will do that. So I did the CBIT in um, in uh, in March, I think it it was in March, tenth uh, of March, eleven, twelve. I, I think I did five or seven presentations, small ones, twenty minute presentations, and uh, it was fun. But it's also hard to get something. I talked about SMB3. I talked about Hyper-V in, in 20 minutes and it's it's quite hard and you have to do some demos or recording. I like more the one hour presentation kind. Yeah, you, you can really tell a story and yeah. get to the level you need to go to explain something. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So what was the next thing you want to talk about? Well, we did some. I, th I think the Hyper V Amigo showcast is, is nice. We did some really nice things about where we dive into demonstrating some technologies like OnMap, ODX, live migration. I think yeah. I think we we've done that well. Uh, I think I think it works out pretty pretty well. Yeah, and, uh, we've had we've had some nice feedback about it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't checked how many people have actually watched it. Oh, I think about around 500 per episode, so it's not so it's bad. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. It could be, of course, better, but uh, it could be much worse. Yeah. yeah. And then this this year, of course, I went to Houston to the uh, to the Tech Hat North America. So this was in May. Let me look. Uh, let Let me see if I have something before May. I have to mention. Then we jump right into the Tech at Houston. This was a big one. So I will see. Well, it's I... Texas. Everything is bigger in Texas. Yeah, okay. So we did uh, Hyper V Amigo Showcast live migration on the 28th of uh, of April. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, then uh, I I did a lot of IT cams uh, uh, in between, and I think we will talk about IT cams when we came to the tech uh, technical summit. We That's should because I saw I saw you and Bernard in action, yeah, and we... I have to say you were one smooth team. Yeah, friend. and I'm very I'm very, very well. uh, sad very that well. Bernard is now doing something else, and we don't do it uh, together uh, anymore. I have another partner. It's uh, he, he he's he's doing it very well, but Bernard and I we did it for three years, and I think we we did more than 100 IT camps. So I think oh. you you have seen that how we some some people said we were like an old uh, couple, you know, a marriage <laughs> yeah. couple, and uh, but it was it was very smooth. It was excellently done. But we'll we'll get back to it yeah, later. Yeah. We'll so now um, I think the thing is uh, TechEd TechEd North America. This was a highlight, wasn't it? It was a highlight on on several uh, for several reasons. One, it was a good conference, a lot of networking, meeting up with a lot of people from all over the world again, which yeah. is always nice. Yeah. And of course, I I got to do a presentation together with Ben Armstrong, yeah. which was kind of cool. I was I must say when I first uh, heard about it on I think on Twitter, I was a little bit envy. But then I thought, oh, that's so great that Didier can do a presentation at TechEd with Ben on the stage. And uh, tell us a little bit about it. Why? What, what was the reason behind that? Why did you get the chance? Because normally it's very hard to get into uh, TechEd presentations. Uh, for, I, for, I know. Of course, I know uh, think of Aiden. He's, uh, he's proposing session after session and uh, now he he did this first one in Europe uh, uh, in in October, and you got there and did a presentation with Ben. Yeah. How did but, it come? Well, I I, I entered some uh, propositions to do a session, but they they didn't uh, make the 
the selection. Yeah. So never mind. I, I can deal with that. So I go there <laughs> and I'm planning to do lots of identity stuff, um, storage, stuff like that. And then at a given moment, Ben says, so I have to do a session. I don't have a lab at the moment. So I offered him my lab. And we had a look and a spin around. And he said, okay, this is nice. Uh, let's present together. So that's basically what happened <laughs> cool. in short. Cool. Uh, you, I just jumped on the occasion to do it, basically. And that was, that was really nice. Uh, how many it's people really... were there? What, what do you think? Ooh, it, it's very hard to tell. It's, it's, it was a, a large room. It, yeah. was, it was reasonably filled. But how many there were there? 100, 150, 200? I don't know. I mean, there's all these bright lights in my eyes. Okay. I'm I'm a bit nervous because I'm demo dolly. And <laughs> <laughs> but you you have done a lot of demos here at the IT. Uh, it's I'd... it's it's something special. Yeah, I, I think I, it's of something course. special. It's live and uh, yeah. and, all... and as and, and as a supporting act uh, of of Ben, you don't want to mess up, right? You no, wanna, you no, wanna, no, you wanna, no. You don't want to do wanna, well. Yeah, wanna Ben. Do well. Uh, maybe a little bit background. Ben is uh, <laughs> is principal program manager in the Hyper V team. And yes. he was our MVP lead uh, for people. And now we have Sarah, and Sarah is Sarah. doing a nice job, Sarah Cooley. And uh, but Ben is like, for me, Ben is Mr. Hyper V. I would yes. put it that way. Yeah? yeah. And for me, it was very special when I did my first interview with Ben. I was so nervous. Uh, this was not this year, but it was. Uh, I think last year, in 2013, um, in February of 2013, and uh, I was oh, yeah. very nervous yeah. to do an interview with Ben. And I'm an old guy. I normally don't get nervous, but this was so special for me. So when you enter the stage with Ben, I, I in at TechEd North America, this is the most important TechEd, I would say. Uh, I think it's really something special in your life, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a highlight. <laughs> okay, it's a highlight, and, and, I, and I was happy that most of it went well. So you are one of the famous TechEd presenter. I will never <laughs> present a TechEd because uh, there is no TechEd anymore. <laughs> there is no TechEd anymore. <laughs> though, though I notice that a lot of people uh, stubbornly keep calling it uh, TechEd. Yeah, uh, but it's it's ignite. Yes, we'll we'll see what happens at Ignite. I'm 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 kind of curious to see how they are going to make a conference uh, with all the subjects spread out across yeah. five days. Uh, I can understand some of the reasoning why they do it. Yeah. I can also see some of the challenges they will have to make it work. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'm kind of interesting uh, interested to see how. Uh, how they will approach it and what, how, how it will be run. Yeah, yeah to give a little bit of uh, background about that, TechEd normally it was four days. And it was mainly um, targeted to IT pros, I guess, a little bit of developers. But it was mainly about the server and system center stuff, right? And okay. Azure, of course, cloud, yes, cloud. I, I, I forgot cloud. How, how could I? So, but now this uh, Ignite thing, there are more than only TechEd. There are more conferences merged into it, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like basically uh, Mac, huh? Microsoft Exchange Conference is yeah. there. You the SharePoint, SharePoint stuff. thing, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it's, so basically, yeah. most, most conferences Microsoft organized or was involved in are. All the subjects are, are coming together. But they are keeping built. So there will be a very developer-focused conference still. Yeah. But all other conferences seem to have merged into no, one big you, one, Ignite. You, you forgot one. Uh, uh, which, which is fine by me. I think you can focus on what you want yeah. to focus. Uh, if you want that, if you want to just uh, shop around a la carte, you can also do that. The, the biggest problem I might see with that is that I do notice that a lot of people can't get to the States for a conference, that's one. And the other one, the concern I have heard about from people is that, uh, wait a minute, it's all very nice to say this is easy, you can, you can grab all the technologies on one, in one conference, yeah. but uh, if now all the people who are dealing with these technologies need to go to the conference, you're basically draining everybody away from the office or the business yeah. Yeah. at the same time. And that's a logistical and operational issue. Yeah. So I don't know how that will work out uh, in regards to the success or the or the or the or the possi or the possibility f for people to attend. Yeah. But it's a concern I've heard a couple of times now, and 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 I kind of dig that. Yeah. 
We will see. Uh, uh, you're right. If from your company, 10 people normally go to the conferences, now spread, spread across they the are world. spread uh, across the conferences, and now yeah, they have to go to the same conference. So it would be not possible, maybe for no. all the people. Yeah. And it's also impossible for two people to go and do everything and then tell it to the colleagues. Yeah. It's too much. But so. normally these conferences are recorded and uh, you can look the sessions afterward. Of course you need a lot of time and if you're on a conference uh, you are there to attend the sessions. You have all the networking stuff and uh, and uh, if you are at home and watch the videos uh, maybe after work or so uh, it's not the same but at least they record them and you can pick the things you want and the, the things you missed maybe on the conference. So I think this yeah. is nice. Yeah, But yeah, you missed, you nice. forgot one conference. Uh, I, I know it's not in your focus. It's a partner conference. I think uh, ah, yes, it's still sure. there. So it's built, it's yeah. a partner conference and it's Ignite. Yeah. And maybe I hope there will be an Ignite over the world like uh, Ignite Europe or so because otherwise we have no conferences in Europe anymore. I have, oh, we still have the technical summit in Germany. Yeah, yes, you're right. I hope it will be there next year. We will see, yeah. But it was quite successful, I think. I think yeah. it was it was well well received again. Did you, did you see the video the the, the um, w w that I put on, on Twitter where you were in the video? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it. The, yeah, yeah it, it was in English, I guess. No, it was in German with English what, what? Uh, yeah. subtitles. No, no, well, the... what I was... If I, Vice versa. Yeah, when you I were speak speaking, <laughs> it was with German subtitles, of course. <laughs> so um, that was uh, the, uh, the the tech at uh, North America. It was in in May, and what what happened after that? Let me see. Ooh. What happened after May? Uh, there was another showcast we've done together. That's for sure. Of course, it was the Generation Two VM. Uh, where we talked about the re generation two virtual machine. Um, ah, then what? What? What else happened there? I'm looking through my, through my things. Oh, then I, for me, um, I did not do so many things in summer because Microsoft, uh, Microsoft business year fiscal year is over in uh, in the mid of summer, and then there is. In maybe in August and September there is a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow there, so there are no conferences. Yeah. Uh, there is all the holiday season in summer. So my next thing was uh, in uh, September. Okay, I tend to use the summer to to do some projects. Yeah. All the people with kids go on holidays and. Uh, uh, so life is a bit less hectic in summer. So I did a really nice project with okay. uh, the transparent fit over file server, ODX on map. Uh, and I got it to work with uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, the antivirus solution. And I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really still pleased and amazed with what a file server nowadays can, can do for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like it a lot. Uh, you know, I'd, I've done a lot of projects with storage spaces, and uh, you, yeah. you see my, my fingers are burned a little bit, of course, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, this is a very promising technology, but it's, it's early. It's only the it's second version, um, and I'm looking forward to the third version in WeNext. Uh, but uh, if you do storage spaces right, it's okay, but I saw some things where people put together all the stuff with, without really knowing what's happening and uh, you can yeah. burn your finger or you can burn yourself very I, easy I, with that. I think you will see that with a lot of the software defined whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's very easy to, to say, oh look, uh, the hardware doesn't matter. We'll just do, it, do everything in software. But uh, I think most people who start doing software-defined storage or software-defined networking start realizing that the vendors who who made a lot of money doing it also delivered a lot of value in testing and in supporting their solutions. That's right. And, uh... If you look into all the issues you can run into with storage, uh, 
it's it's not surprising that uh, it's going to take a while for people to get used to the new way of doing things, and they have to start realizing they need to take care of certain aspects of that storage solutions uh, themselves. Uh, yeah, so. it's it's like the the live migration. Uh, the 10 gigabit live migration you do over a 10 gigabit NIC. This is only after you tweak your hardware. You have to have very nice hardware for that and you have to tweak it. So normally you don't get the 10 gigabit out of the box. You have to know what you have to do to get it. And the same is with all the software defined things. It may work, may work but it, it it is not the best solution you can get out of the box. You have to And also you it. need to realize that over time it gets better. So doing 10 gigabit today yeah. is a lot easier and a lot more productive than doing it uh, three or four years ago. Yeah. Uh, so technology evolves and becomes more accepted and it becomes more, let's say, performant out of the box. But I think a lot of people will just have to get used to the to the idea that uh, you know, it's software defined. It doesn't mean you can just ignore anything that has to do with hardware, firmware, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something that that's sometimes that scares me a bit when I see people doing or talking about softs. I mean, and you're like, uh, so how are you going to do this with with Ethernet or with TCP/IP? And they're like, oh, we'll just hook it up to our switch and we'll be fine. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> we, yeah. you, we need to have a talk here. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you would never ever say that about fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet or iSCSI. But when it comes to file shares, all of a sudden, they seem to abstract all that stuff away. And yeah. I'm like, you, you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. So. The file server, I think maybe the reason for that is the file server is a thing that works very well. So, and for years now, people have file servers and you don't have really trouble with them. And now they, maybe the people think, okay, this is a new kind of file server, but it's still a file server. And this, yeah. this thing worked for the last years without a flaw, well, so the yeah. new stuff have to, has to work the same. And uh, um, I talk a lot, a lot of, uh, with people about scale-out file server. They think this is the thing with the JBots and uh, the high available file server, and they want to use it for everything, maybe for client files. And this is not the, the way to go. The scale-out file server is only for Hyper-V and, uh, and SQL Server and uh, maybe for some other uh, application, server applications who are programmed to use um, the scale-out file server stuff. And uh, people yeah. think they can use it for everything. Yeah. yeah. So, and even there is a difference between a scale-out file server. I call the two servers or the four servers the scale-out file servers. And then you have the possibility to do uh, maybe um, JBots, uh, storage spaces. But I yeah. and you have to you have the possibility to do maybe fiber channel or iSCSI. So, and I think you do the fiber channel or iSCSI thing, not the I did, yeah. not the I JBot did. thing, right? Yeah. Not yet. No. We do a fiber channel. Uh, that's 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 that has grown like that historically. If we were an iSCSI shop, we would be doing iSCSI, but we're, we're a traditional FC shop, so we're yeah. doing FC. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's always funny to me a little bit and a bit disrespectful sometimes because I, I'm absolutely I have nothing against new technologies, far from I love them, but sometimes I hear these people say, "Oh, fiber channel is dead." Well, it's not it's not dominant anymore, and since iSCSI, it hasn't been dominant anymore just due to cost, mm -hmm. but it did. A very good job of course at at delivering storage uh, lossless and reliably uh, and that's something all the new technologies also have to do because there is one thing you absolutely do not tolerate from storage and it is losing your data yeah <laughs> and, uh, I think uh, you're right yeah <laughs> and I think it's very easy to say, oh, well, a SAN, it's, it's dead, it has to go. Well, of course, they are going to change. The shift is happening. But during that shift, people have a little learning curve and they stumble once in a while. That's not, that's not the end of, of the technology, far from. But it's, it's, it's a learning process. It's, it's a journey, as they would say. And some people can, can tolerate a longer journey than some others. So you just have to decide for your organization 
when is the right moment to get started or to step into this technology? Yeah. Right. Let let somebody else uh, take point here. I'll see how they do it. When they figured it out, I'll join them. Uh, some people will take the lead, like you are doing with your with your customers. But it's a, it's a, it's a different a different uh, type of of decision process yeah. and uh, for for many people. Yeah. But there is nothing wrong with uh, <coughs> scale out file server and fiber channel. You get the best no. of of both worlds. You have SMB three for your Hyper-V hosts uh, to <coughs> storage, and you have even the possibility to uh, to do um, the, the CSV cache. Uh, you have a reliable storage system. You maybe have a synchronous storage replication with your with your fiber channels on. This are, is a thing we don't have in storage spaces. Well, so you're, men you're mentioning that now, but if you look at what's uh, known about vNext, yeah. I think they might start addressing some of the missing links we have with the newer well, storage we, we solutions. Can, we can talk about it because yeah. I have inter I've done interviews with uh, Jose Barreto, uh, Alan Christensen, and Ben Armstrong, and so it's out in the wild. And uh, of course, a technology like uh, uh, storage replication or synchronous storage replication right into the file server or in the Windows server is very promising. But your uh, the enterprise storage system like the system you have, the Compellent, has, has, has this feature for years. And yes. of course, it's mature. Microsoft is starting with uh, storage replication now. And uh, they, they do a kind of replication or the technology that is l used, log files and log file shipping, and they do it for years in Exchange and uh, even in SQL Server and so on. But the synchronous storage replication is very promising, but it, it is a new technology. And if you have a ZAN, you are used to it if you do it, and why not uh, put in front of your ZAN a uh, scale-out file server? So you get, I, th I would, uh, I would mm. uh, say again, you get the best of both worlds, and why not do that? I think it's very, um, very, think thoughtful to do it that way because you have your storage; it's paid. Yeah. So why yeah. why throw it out and buy yes. JBoss? That's that would be stupid. And you made you make a very good point. There. Yeah, I see. I see some people thinking about oh new technology. Now we have to replace everything, and that's not true. You can just take the look at it, decide what you can use, how you can use it well, and just implement the parts you need to improve. And you can do that every, each and every year, and you can keep moving to a better environment step by step. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes people don't really understand that part of, of technology, that it doesn't mean you have to throw everything away every time uh, because there is something new. It's just new bits and pieces you can start leveraging. Yeah. So it's a very good point you made, especially because normally what you have is bought and paid for, or at least you, you're not going to get rid of it just, just because somebody came up with something new, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to use it for three, four, four years. There is a... There is a time associated how long you want to have your storage and uh, why change that. And uh, Microsoft yeah. even said the cheapest storage is the storage you al already have. So Basically, yes, that's yeah. true. Maybe you are still paying for it, but uh, if you get some new one, you have you're, to still, still pay be paying for, for the old one. Yeah. So yeah. why not? So um, you played in the holiday season, uh, the, the summer holiday season, a lot with the stuff in, 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 your, um, in your nice large lab, I would say. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was also not sleeping all the time, uh, but uh, I didn't do a lot of speaking and, uh, and uh, presenting the IT camps and so on. So for me, the next thing was in September, uh, where this how it's called, the System Center Universe Europe took place in, uh, in uh, Basel. Basel is, uh, is a city in Switzerland and um, the guys from ITNetX, I always spell it wrong, uh, you know Thomas Maurer, uh, Marcel Zena uh, and uh, um, uh, also Mich Michael, Michael Rüffli. Uh, they are MVPs uh, from this company who is uh, doing the System Center Europe uh, 
conference and I was there. It was a three-day conference uh, with my wife and we did a lot of interviews uh, with the speakers and uh, I also presented two sessions with uh, co-presenters. One with uh, Benedict Berger about uh, VMware to Hyper-V migration uh, and the other one was with Michael Rüffli about uh, storage spaces, a, uh, a best practice about storage spaces and the good stuff is all the 60 sessions are online on channel 9 so if you are interested in system center of course there were a lot of system center sessions about WAP, about all the system center stuff and also some sessions about Hyper-V, Hyper-V replica um, uh, Azure site recovery and so on. You can all, you can see all the sessions. That online. was the second year, right? It was the second year. The first year was That's, in Bern. It's, it's it's amazingly successful for for the second year. It's amazing. Yeah, there were uh, around three hundred people, I would say, something like yeah. that, and uh, there were a lot of a lot of European MVPs, a speaker there, and even some from the US. So uh, I think the creme de la creme of System Center was there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It was so. Well, if you have the chance to go there or to speak there, I would uh, do that, uh, and uh, maybe we can do something next year. We'll see. Yeah. The good. The good thing was, end of September, early October, we got the bits of V next. <laughs> right. So there was no time for speaking, huh? <laughs> no, there was just blogging and testing in the lab, and it was cool because I, 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 I took it and I ran with it for the things I could do. I, I, I wasted a lot of time in trying to get replica storage replication to work, but that wasn't as as transparent as I thought it would be. But that was mainly due to the fact that I, I, I was missing a, a few key points, which they later blogged about. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, we got it to work, and it was like, this is promising. Yeah, it is. This it is, is promising. The it fact is. that we can do this is really, really, really yeah. nice. I have to tell you, I have some problems <coughs> in the moment to blog about the, uh, the next because uh, my company is in the TAP program. And ah, yes. uh, I get some information and I have to test things uh, uh, in the TAP program that I can't speak about in, and blog about. So yeah. the problem... You, everything you find out, you can blog about, yeah, because you find it yourself. But I have some things to test uh, in a tab program. You have to test things, and then there is another thing. We are MVPs. We have an NDA. I have an NDA from the tab program. So I really have a problem. Can I blog about it or not? And I want to, of course. I tested some cool things, and there is these... Uh, this very promising technology that was announced uh, at Tech at North America or Tech at Europe. Um, um, Klaus Jorgensen was talking about it's, ah, it's yeah. something like um, shared nothing storage spaces or shared nothing scale out file server. And I tested that a lot uh, and I can't still talk really about it, but I'm. I'm desperate to show it on a Hyper-V Amigo <laughs> showcast when I'm allowed to do. But there are yeah. very cool things happening there. So I do my videos. I don't block so much in the moment because of these NDA things. And um, But I was there in uh, September. I was in Redmond. And... Uh, we saw the things uh, that are coming in that were not announced in the next uh, the next technical preview. Uh, I think two weeks or three weeks later, technical preview came out and with a lot of information. There is yeah. cool stuff happening there. Yeah? Oh, absolutely! I, I I really love all the efforts they are also doing to make uh, life as continuously available as possible. <laughs> the rolling cluster upgrades. Live. The fact okay. that, yeah. The the. the the fact that you can do the memory adjustments of fixed memory sized VMs, uh, the hot adding of the NICs, the programmability of it all, uh, the improvements in backup that uh, Taylor Brown was talking about at TechEd in Europe. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot of cool stuff to make uh, sure that you have the scalability you need in the future. Yeah. Or it, it's, it's never going down, is it? It always has to go up. Yeah. But also the fact that more and more. Uh, Every time I, I, we've moved from version to version to version, it has not given us just more features, but it, ha it has given us more and more opportunities to do maintenance yeah. and upgrades 
during office hours, yeah. which cuts down on nighttime or, or weekend work tremendously. Yeah. You can actually do your job as an IT pro and not have to do overtime, which yeah. is yeah. actually very yeah. cool. Yeah. And Elden Christensen said in an interview there, they are targeting the software-defined data center. And mm. they, they don't have the, um, the imminent, imminent, imminent how, how you call it. They don't think the data center is now reliable a, as it was in the past. So it's not there all the time. You have to, you have to deal with some problems there. So in, they have to build the resiliency in the software. They, they can't say the hardware will never fail, the network will never fail, the disks will never fail. So if they are building um, a lot of stuff into Windows Server to, to deal with failures, maybe a short outage of the network, uh, maybe a, a switch boot. He talks about mm -hmm. a switch boot and normally in the moment if you have a cluster and uh, uh, you have maybe a stretched cluster or one part of the cluster is connected to one switch and the other to another switch and the other one side fails because the switch is booting. The, the systems can't reach the other hosts anymore. In the moment, uh, all your workloads will uh, fail and will be started on the other, mm. other hosts. But now they, they, um, they calculate some failures in the switches. So if a switch restarts, uh, all the, the, the roles will stay there and run there and they wait maybe for four, four or five minutes before they do the, all the cluster magic. So, Especially for virtualization, this is yeah. nice because a virtual machine is fine. Right? Yeah, it's, maybe it's as fine. Long as yeah. Virtu yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's a bit of a twofold uh, story actually because hardware was never uh, without any issues, you know, yeah. even in the even in the past. So it has to come from two from 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 different things. It has to come from from intelligent software, intelligent applications, but it also have to to has to come from uh, intelligent design because you see a lot of people uh, just building in failure. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> they they really think things are one hundred percent reliable. They never have been, and they only find out when it fails. But you know. What you were thinking or dreaming about yeah. never even existed. Yeah, so, I, I uh, didn't say 100%, but uh, yeah. if you look at your uh, enterprise on storage system, it's, yeah. it, has a, it has a reliable, it, it's reliable. So you can't do things wrong, of course, they can, uh, ha things happen, <coughs> but if you switch to all in software, the hardware is not so important anymore. It's got cheaper and cheaper and you have to design it in software. I think they are well, going there that is, way. There is a limit to that. There is a limit to yeah. that. Because one, one doing an everything in software is, is nice if you have the economies of scale. And I'm talking, let's, 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 let's call it what it is. Let's call clouds, right? Azure, uh, Amazon, whatever. You have economies of scale to do things that way. And you have a, a model that's designed around that principle. But when you're, when you're a company and you have a smaller data center, it's, let's say, uh, 10 racks or 4 racks, uh, life doesn't work that way. So on-premises, on you still have to deal with uh, a different workload, a different reality. Yeah. And I think in, when I look at my environments, it's like we are doing the best of both worlds. We are buying not the most expensive hardware we can find, but we're buying decent hardware and we're making it redundant. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we put all the features that trickle down from the, from the Azure developments into the Windows operating system. And when you combine those, you can get amazing results. Yeah. And uh, just just to put people's mind at ease, look, it's not because you don't have the, the scale of a Google or, or a Microsoft in Azure that this is nothing for you or doesn't... Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You, but you, uh, you Microsoft... Get the, your, yeah. yeah. But Microsoft, you, you mentioned it, has Azure. And Azure is working on Windows Server. So they build, of course things for Azure, but also for us, for us yeah. normal, not e e economy of scale like data centers or this, this large uh, data centers. We, we profit from the development they are doing for their Azure data center. And we know there they don't 
normally have uh, enterprise ZAN storage. There is some enterprise ZAN storage, of course, but mainly it's cheap disks, no RAID in different uh, systems. So they have these, yep. for example, for the disks, they have three disks uh, where they put the data. And uh, it's very cheap because in it's this scale, you, have, you, you can't buy thousands and thousands of enterprise storage systems to and they don't even work at that scale they yeah. were not designed to do that yeah so and it's, so it's a different ball game yeah and look at uh, onedrive for example if you are an office 365 customer you get unlimited no unlimited now oh yeah, they okay. are scaling it up uh, they are wasn't it limited in, in number of files uh, maybe, but uh, not in the size. And the size of the files? No, I, 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 I heard a podcast where they mentioned that they already got 10 terabytes in OneDrive. <laughs> and they talk about unlimited. I'm referring to uh, uh, this, using... this Week in Windows with um, Mary Jo Foley and Paul yeah, Zarat. Yeah. And they talked about unlimited storage. Okay. So yeah. you can't do unlimited storage on Compellent or on HP 3 power or, or it's too expensive. And uh, even this of course, uh, have costs a little bit of money. Even the six terabyte or eight terabyte disks that maybe are coming cost money. And it's not without issues. Yeah, of if course. I count, if, I, if I count right, last year they forgot to renew the certificate. <laughs> then they had an issue with the, the space reclamation that went, let's say, a bit, that became a bit too enthusiastic and started to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, eating, eating data. Yeah. And then a couple, a couple of weeks ago they had the issue with, uh, with the downtime. Yeah. So even even at that level, at that scale, with that you know level of expertise and commitment, uh, shit happens. Econo <laughs> e economies of scale also mean that when things go wrong, if they go that also wrong scales, in math. Right? Yeah, that scales. Yeah. 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 You, you, of course, you're right. But uh, um, they are doing nice things in uh, Windows Server. We get more resiliency to failure. I, let it put it that way. We, if we want to, our cluster will survive an outage of a switch, for example. And oh, absolutely. I, so I think this is nice, and you don't have to use it. You can turn it off, like that the cluster, I, I, I understand it at least that way, that the cluster behaves the old way, like now, and you can change the numbers maybe, so uh, it will wait longer to, to, to reboot or, or fail the thing. So you have I think, some choice I think it's there. very nice that you can, you can match it to your needs yeah. in your environment. Yeah. But you can figure out, hey, this is my sweet spot, and yeah. I'll use this. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's nice. So what else happened? So I have had my... Uh, my uh... Didn't we meet up in the States? Afterwards, yeah, you know, we, we did, but I, but, but I have a conference uh, between our meetup in the States and the System Center Universe. There was a conference, it is for German partners, it's uh, Technic, no, wait, the Technical Server Summit. It's not the technical so. summit, it's a technical server summit. It was in mid of October, and I had two talks there, and um, even a lab uh, where I showed the people Hyper-V and System Center and so on. And this was a nice conference, but I had an experience there I want to tell you. I think I, we talked about, but we, I didn't talk about it in the Amigo showcast, or did I? I don't think so. So no, I, I, I have was no clue what you're talking about. I was right referring now, so. about so um, I had never a failure while I was presenting in front of people. Oh, so yes, yes, that, that was there. That was, <laughs> yes, that was what the they are. Okay, cool. So okay, I, I, I want I want to tell you. Um, yeah. So I had never a failure. I, I was so lucky to have never a beamer outage or, or something or a power loss or, or whatever. And uh, I was at the conference and uh, uh, an MVP colleague of us, uh, Benedict Berger, came to, to me and said, I have a beamer outage in my presentation for three or four minutes. So I thought, oh, I, I'm so lucky. I never had that before. And on the next day, I was presenting about storage uh, in Windows Server in a room of maybe 80 people. I was presenting, and half through my presentation, or maybe 40 mi minutes, it was uh, a 60-minute talk, after 40 minutes, suddenly the beamer and the sound went off. So I was standing there, 80 people, and I had no... They, they can't see my presentation. 
Okay. So I thought, okay, what what are you doing now? You have still the the, the really exciting stuff is still coming. So what do you do? I I turned my notebook to the audience, and in the front row they maybe could imagine what what was on the presentation, <laughs> and I was talking. So. Um, Normally, when I do German talks, I, 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 I work a lot of with fun. I, I like to joke with the people, and they were laughing. I saw that. Yeah, I saw I, that. I, they were la laughing about it. So I, I went on with my presentation, and I talked from my head without the slides, because I forgot to, uh, to go on with the slides. And 10 minutes later, the whole room went dark. So I was standing in the dark. No beamer, no sound, no light. And... I was I was angry. I want to present the last 10 minutes, so I took out my little phone. I switched on the light in the phone, <laughs> put it here, show show me and talked talk, was still talking and they were laughing so hardly. I <laughs> I didn't really think about what I I was doing. So, um I got a nice ranking from the session because it, it was a lot of fun for them. They were still there, and the last two minutes the light went on again. But I, it was pretty uh, hard. It was pretty hard. Uh, yes, I never had before had any problems while I was presenting. Not not any problems. Did you have pro uh, problems before? No, the the, the most the most the most uh, let's say nervous moment was in in Holland when I when I didn't have an internet connection. <laughs> and you want right to show Asia? No, you want to demo your your stuff. Yeah, and uh, sure, yeah. That's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that was, but but not nothing, nothing to the level that you're just describing. I must yeah. say, pretty hardcore, and well done because that must have been. Quite quite fun to watch actually. I, uh, First, I, they were, they were... unstoppable Hyper V power. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, they were they were taking some pictures uh, of me. Uh, I I uh, have it on Facebook. Are they online somewhere? Can yeah, we on, enjoy on, more? On, on Facebook. Maybe I put it in the show notes of the of the cast. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. But it was not only me. They they had a power outage in uh, um, in the hotel. Um, and first, they uh, they took off the high consumer, so the beamer and the sound was connected to the 380 volt, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know if there is something like that in in the U.S. or so, but we have 240 volt and we have 380 volts. Uh, normally, your oven in the kitchen is connected to this. Your electro oven is connected to this higher 380 volt thing. So they first turned off the 380 volt uh, power, and it was not enough. And 10 minutes later, they turned off all the power. So <laughs> I was not the only one with problems. All the sessions that took place at that time had these problems, but I, I didn't hear how the other guys were uh, were handling it. I, I think they... Or they were scared alone in the dark, <laughs> no. hiding, trying to survive while but, you were shining in your but, own bright light. You know? <laughs> when, you rem when you imagine uh, 80 people are sitting in the dark, there was no, no, uh, no window in the room. This is quite... Uh, um, dangerous, maybe. So uh, you are sitting. As long the as they keep still, not yeah. that much. Yeah, they they they, good... they they were laughing uh, about what I was doing there. But uh, remember, at Tekkat, you have a room with maybe 500, 700 thousand attendees, and the light went out. So That's this why is... you should always have a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, you should. And now your nice phones have that. You have to get one of those phones. Did you? I have a flashlight actually. You have a flashlight, but your phone <laughs> hasn't. Huh? Your phone hasn't any phone? light. Yeah. I don't know where is my phone actually. <laughs> I just no, whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this this I want to tell this because it was, uh, it was a really, it was nice that I handled it so well, but yeah. I didn't really thought about it. It was it was, it was a reflex. You went with the flow. Yeah, I right. went with the flow. I was really angry, so that I can't present my my storage stuff. And another nice anecdote: I was there with uh, I had a Gibbs. I, how you call it in English? Oh yes, yeah, on my uh, nose. So uh, I I have broken my nose in the beginning of October. Uh, actually, my my horse broke my nose. <laughs> I also a kind how, of funny. How do you how do you call your wife? <laughs> not a, a horse, no. Ah, <laughs> no <laughs> not Kerstin, my horse. <laughs> <laughs> I was not fighting for Kerstin or so. I, I, I was thinking about telling such a story, but I'm, I can't lie very well. So my, I, I had an accident with my horse and my nose was broken. And uh, I have to wear um, something over the nose. So yeah, it's protective, a uh, protection. And uh, I started my session 
um, describing what happened, what happened with my nose. So the people are not always are staring at my nose and not uh, hearing what I'm talking about. But this okay. went over very well. And then we had our nice meeting in Redmond again, right? You, you want to talk about that, of course, huh? Well, not too much because it's all NDA, but it was it was an amazing week. It it was my I'm I'm I must admit it was my best MVP summit yet. It's it's amazing the amount of of feedback and interaction uh, you have with each other as, yeah. um, as with your fellow MVPs, but also with the product teams. And I I I will I will as long as I'm an MVP, do my utmost best to always be able to attend the MVP summit. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm uh, with you, man. It's it's the most important uh, thing. To, as to anyone who ever becomes an MVP and he thinks about the time and the expense of of attending the MVP summit, try to make it. You will yeah. not regret it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's 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 an experience you do not want to miss. Yeah. So of course there are very good ones and there are good ones. <laughs> so not ev every MVP summit is the same. They. This time they could talk about Vnext a lot, um, but there are years, or we had, we had, we there were years in the past where not really new stuff was coming out at that moment when we when we were there. So it was more um, um, best practice things with uh, the stuff they they did. Uh, but this well, time you go deep, you go deeper. Yeah, then, right? but this time everything it's... came together. There was a Tech at Europe uh, before that. Uh, we didn't talk about Tech at Europe because we both weren't there. But uh, our fellow MVP Aiden was there, and he speaking. had a session. He was speaking, yep. and this is not the thing. He, he won the speaker idol. This is for, for North America, not for Europe, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the MVP summit was great, and I had the chance to do three, four, five, six interviews, video interviews. Four are out now. Uh, I did an interview with Ben Armstrong. Uh, when we had our MVP um, come together, or our uh, MVP event, Evening. night event, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did an interview. Um, ben told very interesting things in the interview, but he's not so well lighted because he, he his his uh, face is mostly in the dark. But uh, um, we have to. He, we went outside because it's it was so loud at the at at the uh, event uh, and uh, I, s I saw the interview it was great the the, the the talk what what ben told us was really great and he he even talked about containers and i'm very excited about containers i'm I, I I I can't wait to get them in, in into my hands and uh, re really look what what microsoft did with the concept so uh, uh mm, Ben talked about containers in the interview, and uh, I'm looking forward to this technology. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, there's an interesting stuff happening there. Yeah, and That's then I, sure. di I did an interview with uh, Mark Minassi. Uh, I talked 30 minutes or more with Mark. Mark is always very fun to talk to, but I had there some problems with my microphone. I was really? so, Yeah, I was so stupid to, to put the... the, the the microphone into the earbuds, not the microphone in the camera. So the interview is only recorded by the camera microphones and not by the microphones that I'm always <laughs> putting there. Okay. So there is that some... was for show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it that I put it in the in the wrong. Uh, and then you say plug. you had a problem with the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I did another interview with Alden Christensen. So he is principal program manager in the failover cluster team, and it was really nice in his uh, in his uh, how you call it borough. So you uh, see office. outside, uh, yeah, in his office. And uh, I did another one with Jose Barreto, and this was also very interesting in Jose's uh, borough uh, office. Uh, he has six PCs there, like the two that are standing behind you. He yeah, has yeah, six four. of them, or four. He has six, yeah. so yeah. he's a principal program manager. You are only MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I had him first. <laughs> okay, you had him first. But you were there. I, I, we were... Yeah, yeah I, I visited his office. And yeah. I, I saw he had his old PC lab and his new PC lab. Yeah. And the cool thing about the lab is you immediately know it's a lab for a technical person who has to test a lot yeah. because they're all reversed <laughs> and all the NIC ports are exposed <laughs> so he can easily change the configuration to tests. You're right. And yeah. basically I can't blame him. I'm 
I I'm about to do the same here. <laughs> so at the next showcast, we will see your PCs turned, right? Your your Perhaps. little service, yeah. Aiden, Aiden. Yeah, and then I did another interview with uh, Aiden. This is not out yet. I have to cut it and uh, put it out. And with Chambo, Chambo, num how it's called? Ah. No more. Yes, I, I'm, I'm not I've, really sure, but I, I, I just pronounce it the way it's, it's written, actually. Yeah. Just, you know. He's a very, very passionate new MVP, and he, yes. he got his award in October, and yeah. he asked on, on, uh, on, uh, on our MVP uh, list uh, who is there, and I, I, I told him, go there if it's possible. And he did everything, like, like you uh, said before, to get to the MVP summit. If you have only one month in, um, one month's it's time not, to organize it's it, easy. it's, it's not, easy, not yeah. easy. But he was there, and it was really a pleasure to, to meet him. And I did an interview with him. It will be out soon. Um, and uh, we did another interview at the Technical Summit. I think yes. this is maybe the next thing after oh, the MVP yeah, Summit. Yeah, yeah. The, because the it was a week wheels. after. My, my training <laughs> wheels remark, I remember now. <laughs> no, it was it was really great meeting Charbel because, you know, for him that was his first MVP Summit and there is nothing, that's the, the very special one, isn't it? Yeah, it the is. The very first it MVP is. Summit. We were together at our first MVP Summit, you remember? Yeah. You yeah. were also a new January MVP and yeah. at that time the MVP summit was in February I guess. Yes. And, and now it's in November we... they moved it to November but you have all, all you have also took all the trouble uh, to get there to yeah. your first my, my, our our CEO was very supportive at that moment he yeah. was really great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, after the MVP summit nice event nice networking nice everything we, we we met new people we had a lot of fun of course uh the next week you flew in on monday and on tuesday you had to present i guess or was it on wednesday i i i i returned from the states on monday yeah and on tuesday i flew into berlin and on so, wednesday so i came you home to sleep uh, switch take some new clothes and uh, i was <laughs> off to berlin yeah and you did very well in your presentation. I, Apparently, I did. I, 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 I did. saw the numbers, the best three presentations. You had the second best. So, yeah. and there were over 40 presentations or 50. And uh, of course, you you couldn't beat the first one. That's impossible yeah. because this is Paula. Speaking Paula about unbeatable, unbeatable. Uh, she was uh, talking about security. She is uh, MVP from Poland. She uh, she's she's doing a lot of security. And uh, imagine a very nice, attractive young woman talking about security in front of a room of mostly men. You can't beat that. Oh? No. You so you, you did the you second best, and uh, it was a great session. It was about? Uh, what's new in failover clustering, actually, in uh, 2012 R2? And the nice thing about that is, like, hey, look, it's been out for a year. Uh, is there anything new to tell? Well, for a lot of people, a lot of people haven't even noticed that some of those things that are new or that have been enhanced. Yeah. So it's always it's always a nice uh, subject to talk about. Uh, it's a lot to talk about actually even in an hour. Uh, because you you can I, I try to mix demos with 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 talking about what what it was and why it was there and I think that worked out quite well. Yeah. And of course uh, being it, able to laugh at yourself when you make mistakes also <laughs> helps. Yeah, um and your session it was in English of course. Uh, all your, our Thank viewers you. can watch it. It's online at channel 9. I will put it in the uh, in the show notes of the of the sh the show. My sessions were in German so not so many people can watch them. Uh but if you are German uh, speaking or you can understand German, there were a lot of sessions uh, this conference was uh, a mix between development and uh, for IT pros. It was also a mixed uh, audience, and yep. uh, there were a lot of lot of nice sessions there. And uh, Paula's session was also in English, so uh, maybe you watched it. Uh, Mark van Eyck was there. I Mark van Eyck yep. for me he is Mr. Azure Pack, and um, 
he uh, also Hans Wredewort, he wasn't there talking, but he's also um, a guy, one of our colleagues who is doing a lot of Azure stuff. And his yeah. his colleague Mark van Eyck was there uh, talking about uh, uh, Azure Pack. So uh, Martin Good was there talking about uh, identity in Azure and so on. A lot of cool sessions, and uh, some of them are in English. So maybe it's worth a look. And I did an interview with you and with Mark van Eyck. They are not out yet. They they will be yeah. in the new year, but uh, you told me something, and I asked you in the interview. You, <laughs> you, you talked about DevOps, right? Yes, I did. And what was your, what did you say about DevOps? So DevOps, please, please DevOps repeat. is 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 a an intermediate step to where we really need to go. Okay. And we need to go to really site resilience engineering. Yeah. And so for me, DevOps are the training wheels on a children's bike. <laughs> you know, it's the first step to learning how to cycle. And yeah. I think the industry has to learn how to cycle. And for that reason, I would love to see the training wheels come off and people move on even beyond that. Yeah. But I had this discussion with, with an MVP, uh, Jeff Wouters, who does a lot of PowerShell programming. So, And he's a bit involved into the DevOps world, let's say. And he told me, you're right, but for a lot of people, a lot of companies and organizations, even DevOps is a huge step to take. So yeah. it might not go as fast as you think it would or, or you would like to, whatever. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Hey. Hello, Kirsten. Kirsten is coming in too. She's remembering me of the time. I will close in five minutes and I, I will do what I have to do. Nine, I, I do it. I'm 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 finished with him in five minutes. I do it. I promise it. So I I told you Didier, I have a hard time cut. Uh, so yes. let's finish this up. Uh, the, the, the the technical summit was a very nice conference in Berlin. It was the second time uh, uh, last year. It's what was called Tech Ed Conference, and this year uh, we had a nice uh, nice keynote speaker. Sacha was there. This was yeah. very surprising. It it uh, was an honor for for the conference that uh, Microsoft CEO CEO was talking. You missed yeah. it because it was you weren't there on the first day, but it's online. I think I Sacha is following me. He was in Redmond and in Bellevue when I was there. Yeah. He was. I was in London during my way on the way home, and he was in London that day. <laughs> the day after, I am in Berlin, and guess where he is? In, in Berlin. Berlin. I mean, there's there's something fishy going on. Yeah, there, there is something. He's following some yeah, of our following. finest MVPs, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think this is also what's the last thing. Oh no, you have another conference. You had another conference in Belgium. Experts Life in in Holland. How was uh, it? I, it was it was great. A, a huge event. Uh, uh, I think they 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 are really growing. And if 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 they keep this up, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be huge. I mean, I think they they. There's a Stack Days conference in Holland, and I think they're about as big as as Stack Days. So, and it's a community-driven event. Of course, it gets some corporate sponsorship because when you get that big, you have to have the logistics for. Uh, I think it was 700 people or oh, something. Oh, cool! Or Even nearly like the technical summit. Yeah, I mean, if, if if you start talking about those numbers of people, uh, it's not something that just the user group can 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 carry the burden for anymore. Yeah. You know, you have to have some uh, sponsorship and some corporate assistance there to to make it all happen. But yeah. the fact that they they do make it happen because it's it's an event where all the speakers turn up. Uh, it's it's not it's not very expensive. Uh, to, to attend, it's it's uh, it's it's very nice, and I was surprised to see so many familiar faces and enthusiasm in in, in with with the attendees about the technology. It's it's always I, nice. I have to ask you one question, and I I asked you before. Uh, you had one or two sessions, one, 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 and I asked you before. Will it be in English or in uh, Dutch? It wasn't. It was in. It was in. I think I, I decided to go for Dutch. Okay. But, so but I'm, not, I'm not even sure anymore because <laughs> I, I think I think I went I went for Dutch. I was hoping somebody in the room would say I don't understand Dutch, so I could do it in English. Yeah. But I think nobody obliged me, <laughs> so I I I, I try to do it in Dutch. But of course, when you're talking about technology and IT, it always turns into a sort of 
neither English. Or <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I'm doing it in German, and yeah. uh, I do it a lot in German. I, I still prefer it in my mother tongue uh, to to I, do the I, presentations. But you, you shine. I mean, I, I saw, I saw Carsten in action uh, during an IT camp. Uh, <laughs> And with, with Frank, and, and and I must say, it was a pleasure to attend. And, and it was watch. our last. It was our last. Yes. Ever last. And, and, uh, and it was it was a grand finale. Yeah, you really, you you, you did a nice 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 interview uh, about it, and uh, you said some really nice things. Yeah, and uh, and I even remembered him. I was not drunk at all. <laughs> okay, it was nice to have you there, and uh, you attended it, uh, uh, and uh, it was your last day, so you had some time, and uh, it was really nice. Nice to meet you there, and I'm looking forward to our new, our next meeting in maybe May, or it will be May, and then after that in June in Berlin, June. and maybe we will see before that. You never know. Uh, you never know. I have. You never know with the Bavarians, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wrap up things now, so okay, uh, let's cool. wish our our watchers a nice Christmas and a happy new and year. And happy new year. And they will. See us again in the next year. I think this is this is something that has a lot of fun for us, and uh, hopefully for our watchers too. Huh? Okay, cool, Carsten. Bye bye. Didier, I wish you a nice Christmas and a happy New Year, and uh, greetings to Luz. Okay, same to you. Bye bye. Bye.